Hello, ladies and gents, and welcome back. Batslob is still playing Black Forest. 1,438 days ago, I uploaded the Legend of Fatslob, the player who plays with very unique settings. He plays 1v1 Black Forest and only 1v1 Black Forest, and only Vikings with all the old balance, and we'll get to that. Now, it sounds like that's a long time ago, and really it is. A lot has changed in 1,438 days, both in Age of Empires and my life, and maybe your life as well. Who knows? But Fatslob has actually been doing this for a very long time. Fatslob has played over 5,000 games since 2013 with these settings. And before that, between the years of 2007, 2012, he played 2,500 games. He knows what he likes. And according to his profile, he was born in 1949. So uh, he's certainly up there in age and he is not ready to change at all. Uh, Fatslob in the blue, the famous Black Forest player. Happy to have you guys back. I know for many of you, you might not really watch my content all the time. It's hard to when I upload a video every single day. And some of you guys might just come back every so often to see what Fatslob's up to. So nice to see you. Hope it's happy to hear my voice and see Fatslob. And apologies, by the way, I'm using an old casting program. Um, and it's the old version of the game and I'm not really used to it. So there might be some weird things where the audio is too loud or... The mouse doesn't move around properly. I've even got the big trees. But uh, Fatslob here is up against Karate Kid. And fun fact about Karate Kid, this is the only game that Karate Kid played on this platform in two years or, or like a year and a half. And so my theory is that this is a player who knows Fatslob. This is a player who's aware of his reputation, but also knows that he still plays on Vubli. He doesn't play on any Steam version of the game. And so it's possible this person arrived to play Fatslob. And I think, granted I have no details on this, I think that Karate Kid knows his reputation, okay? Um, there's going to be things to allude to that in this game, that he knows his reputation. And that is a common thing with Fatslob, or maybe half the people that play him know him and try and break him. Um, we're going to talk a lot about a lot of things in this cast. Uh, I do a Fatslob game about once, maybe twice a year. It's a very special moment for me because I record this solely for YouTube. I get to connect with you guys on a more personal level, if that's even possible, as I'm literally just talking to a computer screen. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to upload this on Christmas Eve. So first, I just want to say Merry Christmas to everyone who's celebrating. Um, when this goes up, I am going to be enjoying time with my family, who I've not seen in some time. Hopefully, we can stay safe and all that, as the pandemic is very much a reality. But... Very grateful for you guys, and there's been a lot of changes recently, and depending on how long you've been around my community, uh, you may or may not uh, have heard about those things recently, and uh, I'm just kind of excited to talk to you guys about it on a more personal level and cast some freaking Age of Empires here. So, uh, strap in and hope you guys enjoy this one. Here comes the very pixely Borlord. Check out these graphics. How did we enjoy this, man? This is super nostalgic for me, but now that we have the Definitive Edition, when I zoom... I'm just captivated by it. <laughs> it's so pixely. It's so pixely. And so we know Karate Kid's got some level of experience as he brings in a boar. I should say, before we actually get too heavy and crazy here, as Fatslob chops his straggler trees, um, since this casting layout is different than 99% of my uploads, let's just go over again where some of these things are, okay? You've got the eco at the bottom left. And then you have the military right behind that on the little graph. Then you can see the overall population and the resources for both players and the KD. What I love is how many resources are on the map. That is around the mini map. That's a really fun stat to see. And then uh, the blacksmith upgrades are on the right. And there will be something way up here if they ever are researching an upgrade um, or going to the next stage. So those are kind of the basic things um, as we kind of get back here. That sub's always known for walling. And he will wall more. Um, he plays with Vikings because Vikings does not get Siege Onager. And he just, I, I don't know how when he developed this strategy, but yeah. since these are the classic settings, you know, nowadays you can research Onager and chop through trees on the HD edition, as well as the definitive edition. That was not the case back in the day. So this guy's just, he just walls up and later on he's going to wall more. And people try and break through his walls essentially. And he forces them. He doesn't force them. He will not launch his game if you are not also playing Vikings. 
pretty crazy. Uh, check this out from Red, though. This tells me that Red's an experienced player. He's ahead with villagers already, but he's adding a dock. And uh, this is something I would consider kind of a higher elo move, is to add a dock in these situations. Produce some fishing ships alongside producing some vills. And you're in a fairly good spot. And, you know, we zoom out to witness what this map looks like from afar. The fat slob is definitely a little more fortunate with this map gen than others. Um, there's five relics on each map gen. And you can see there's a relic down here somewhere. Where is it? Is it not here? It's here. Yeah, there's a relic there for Karate Kid. And there's a relic here for Karate Kid. Granted, he has to chop to get there. But Karate Kid does not have any neutral golds. Um, there's this neutral gold, which I suppose he could chop to. Fatslop could do as well. And then this neutral gold is available for Mr. Fatslop. Um, so, with three relics closer to Fatslop, as you see a relic here and the other two out in the open, plus the extra golds, Fatslop will definitely benefit from that. And it is currently played on Explored. So, the players will know that. This is what they see on the minimap. Uh, this is how classic Age of Empires worked. People didn't really stress out about balance as much and say, oh, we've got to fix the map gens with the neutral golds. It's not a tourney. It's just a ranked game. It's the basic version of Black Forest. Uh, and that's that's what Fat Slob likes. All right. And I feel like I've been talking a mile a minute here. So uh, I'm going to tell you what Red is going to build up towards here. A little spoiler, but it is something that I think is worth talking about. Red is going to build up towards pressure, okay? I won't give huge specifics, but he's going to build up towards something that, again, tells me that he knows Fat Slob to an extent, okay? Like, he he knows that this guy walls. He's already pressuring the walls, right? This might not be the craziest thing, but he's got an idea of how Fat Slob likes to play, and as our, my game slows down for some reason, I don't know why it goes so slow like this. I don't know why. Um, it is the old Capture Age version, which occasionally will speed up and slow down. My apologies. But, uh, you know, he's, he's going to build up towards a little bit of pressure here, and Fatslob just does his thing. Fatslob takes his time. He's in no rush to get anywhere. When he plays, it's an all-day affair at times. He probably makes sure he frees up his schedule and that he's ready to be able to commit to his afternoon of games. Now, Fatslob did speak to me briefly a few times, and... He did tell me that he was not actually born in 1949. But I'm trying to do the math here. And forgive me, I am going to have to use a calculator because I suck. But how old would that make him? If he was born in 1939, that would be... Uh, that would be... Um, 72. Woo! Woo! 72. I wish... I, I love to believe that there's some guy... 72 years old in Sweden. That's where Fatslob's from. Just grinding away with some Age of Empires every now and then. Happy to see that Fatslob played this month. You know, he only played two games this month, so he is slowing down. But yes, Fatslob told me that he's not quite as old as his profile alludes to. That's what it said. Um, so, you know, maybe he's 10, 15, 20 years younger than that. But, you know, I have a father who doesn't really like video games. And so it's harder for me to envision someone, and my dad's about to turn 70, actually, at that age, playing video games. But man, oh man, is that freaking cool. So if you've got stories out there, if your dad or your uncle or your granddad or your, your mom, your grandmother, just, just someone who's a bit older than you, uh, who you grew up with, who still plays some video games every now and then, I would love to hear that story, especially if it was Age of Empires. That'd be a really cool story to see in the comments. Karate Kid hits Feudal Age. Now, look at these resources for a second, okay? You do get Wheelbarrow for free with Vikings, so that makes your economy quite strong. And at the moment, it doesn't look too crazy. So he's just got 400 food, 200 gold. He forgot about these villagers underneath the TC. Because of the fishing ships, has done a better job than Fatslob with everything. And he knows what he's doing here. He's going to go for a market, and he's going to go for a blacksmith. And just kind of take his time as he builds up towards the next age. Fatslob hits Feudal Age, very similar spot, except he didn't go to gold. What did he do? Well, instead, he went to stone. You can see, actually, he hasn't, oh no, he did go to stone here. And Fatslob, just to be certain, is going to wall the middle area now, because it's better safe than sorry. 
Lots of people try feudal age pressure against fat slob, but the couple palisade walls is always enough to keep that out. He always gets super far into the choke point, so even if they're able to range this area, he'll just wall behind. And so if you look at Red's point of view here, Red can see that, and there's not much Red can really do about it. But Red will have a plan, okay? I don't want to freak you out and get you too excited yet. This is going to be a long, eventful road, as it always is with Fat Slob games. But Red will have a plan as he's about to click up to Castle Age. Man, this, these graphics are so nostalgic. You know what just dawned on me? Is how smooth the Fog of War is in this explored area. I, I don't know if that makes sense to you, but it looks so smooth. I, I, it might be the grass or something, but every, this, everything just seems so satisfying. Almost more satisfying to look at this than it is to look at this right now. Does that make sense to you guys? Can you guys describe what I'm talking about? Or am I crazy? I don't know. I mean, I am crazy. You don't need to answer that. Red might have the golds to complain about, but uh, Red will not have the boars to complain about. There's five boars over here. And uh, he's going to head over there and have a good time. And I think it is probably time, as Red is on the way to Castle Age, to tell you a Christmas story. Because why not? We have the time. We know what Fat Slob's going to do. Fat Slob's going to wall up. Red is going to get a lot of resources and might be thinking about a castle as he's on stone. Maybe even some more aggressive strategies. Wink, wink. Hint, hint. Um, yeah, I want to tell you a Christmas story, okay? Now, you guys might not like this Christmas story, and if so, I encourage you to fast forward through the video. It's not one of my best stories, but it is a story I always think of every single Christmas. And especially now that I'm an old man at 28 years old and closing in on 29, and I live far away from my family... I always look back to some great moments growing up, okay? And so I take you to Christmas Eve. God, I don't know what the year was. I was probably 10, so that would have made it 18 years ago. Wow, I am old. Um, 18 years ago, so let's say 2003, okay? It's Christmas Eve. Now, on Christmas Eve, we always get together with my dad's side of the family. It's always been the plan. So my dad's side of the family gets together Christmas Eve. And we wake up and we do uh, we, the present opening thing with my mom and dad and with my siblings. And then we go to my mom's side for dinner around lunchtime or, or, or lunch around lunchtime. Okay. So that's always the plan. Now, I don't know what your household is like, but it's always used to frustrate me. And I understand it a little bit more now that I'm an adult. But... Holidays are supposed to be the time of joy and peace and harmony, okay? That's that's what everyone talks about. And it is, and it's a, it's a wonderful time, don't get me wrong. But it always seemed like every time that it was about to be a great time for me as a kid, I get to open presents, um, I get to go sledding if we're lucky. Just really, honestly, all, all that matters is the presents. I didn't even care about the food. Just wanted to open stuff because I was a selfish little kid. Every time life was about to be great for me, my parents would get a little stressed. Now, not during the actual event, but in the lead up, they've got to clean everything and they've got to wrap everything and mom's got to make the food and dad's got to get this ready. And so there's this like day or two scramble where they've got to get stuff ready. Hey, by the way, Red is going fast Imperial right now, by the way. He's adding the monastery and the university. He needs a thousand food. He's at 900. And then Red is about to be at 800, which is exactly what he needs, or 800 gold, sorry, to go imp. But anyways, as he's fast imping, my dad is trying to clean real fast, and my mom is trying to cook real fast. And there was always this stressful time, and of course, I'd have the things that I could chip in with and some chores. But it always bothered me as a kid. I'm like, well, guys, why, why is everything so unhappy and so stressed right now? And it's just because, you know... You're hosting some events and having some people over. I get it now as I have my own place. You just don't... You want to trick people in your life to thinking you're cleaner and more decorative than you really are. That's really what it comes down to, okay? So anyways, there's that period on Christmas Eve as we're waiting to host the dad's side, okay? And I don't really recall what it was exactly. But I recall my father was told to do something. And I think it revolved giving something to my uncle. 
okay? So my uncle and my aunt and other people were arriving to the house. And Laurie was like, please don't forget. Why did I say Laurie? Why did I just call my mom by her first name? What is wrong with me? Okay, my mother, okay, uh, was like, hey, don't forget to give this to your brother. My dad said, okay. Mom said, it's very important. Dad said, it's okay. Christmas Eve happens. We had a great time. Everything was great. And I, I didn't hear any adult conversations. I was in a carb coma asleep. And I went to bed nice and early because I used to wake up at like 4 a.m. to run downstairs to look at the presents. I couldn't open the presents until mom and dad were up at around 8 a.m. But I would still wake myself up at 4 a.m., go downstairs and look at them and go, ooh, ah, uh, and try and guess what things were. And then I'd go back to bed. So anyways, I go to bed. Don't hear anything. We wake up the next day. We open our presents. It's a splendid time. And then it is time to go to my mom's side of the house, okay? Our mom's side of the family. It happened to snow that year, and maybe I could nail down how old I was because there was a lot of snow. Like, I want to say there was a foot of snow, and if you guys grew up in central Pennsylvania, maybe you remember, but here's Red's castle as he's gone. He's in Imp right now making a castle. Fatslop is very much in the castle age and stuck there. Um, but yeah, so it was very snowy, and then... All of a sudden, it occurred that my father did not give my uncle what he was supposed to. Now, we were, it was just us at that time. The, the extended family was gone. So, of course, there's this, oh, this stress. This stress seeps back into my mother's life. Oh, we've got to do something now. And so there was a whine. There was a groan. But it wasn't too bad. We're all happy. It's Christmas. So they said, you know what? We'll just run over and we'll drop this off at or at the uncle's house, okay? It wasn't that far out of the way, but it was super snowy. I mean, there were no plows yet, so there's snow everywhere, but my dad's got four-wheel drive and an extreme ability to believe that he is incredible at driving in snow. And so off we go, in the snow, okay? My brother, my sister, and I, my mom, my dad, off into the snow on Christmas Day. And so we... Hold on, hold on, hold on. I would be a really bad caster of Fat Slob, if I didn't tell you about this right here, Fatslob is getting fortified wall, okay? <laughs> he he doesn't have really have a vill lead, but he's getting fortified wall at the moment. And, uh, I mean, he's got a two vill lead, that's something. And that's because he knows that Red's an imp, and he's worried that Red might hit the walls. Red's got a different plan, as Red is currently making trebuchets. But we continue. I promise I'll finish this story soon. So the whole build up here is basically to just give you that idea that things were a little stressful for the holidays. And one more thing was kind of tacked on to to the agenda for that day. And a lot of that, you know, was was uh, even more stressful because of driving through the snow. So we finally get to my uncle's house and the, the road is covered in snow. And my dad goes, hey, why don't you run it in? And I'll just wait out here and we can pick you up. Okay, so it's a residential street. My dad parks. My mom gets out. She walks through the snow, knocks on the door, and walks inside. Meanwhile, my brother and I are like, Dad, do a donut. Do a donut, Dad. My dad is not a reckless person, okay? He, he probably never broke the speed limit. He probably never broke a law. I never heard my dad swear before. He never touched a cigarette, alcohol, anything. My father is as straight-laced as it gets, okay? And my dad's eyes light up, and he's like, let's do it, basically, okay? <laughs> and so, my dad backs out of this little spot. There's no cars in the road, really. I mean, thankfully. And he starts doing a massive donut. And this, this led me to believe that he clearly had experience when he was in his teens and 20s. But he starts going crazy, all right? And when we're about our, our fourth little twirl, my mom, I honestly, she probably should have noticed. Why didn't I think about this? How did my mom not see a spinning car in the middle of the road? Mom should have paid attention. But my mom is coming up to the side of the road. And she's ready to get to our next festivities, right? She gets destroyed with a wave of snow. I'm talking like almost threw her over 
wave of snow. It was the best moment of Christmas for me. The best moment. Just like the look of shock and horror on my mom's face as I see this snow fly towards her and it hits her in like the chest and like the stomach region and just just like smashes into her. And then the absolute disgust on her face when my dad slows down the car, pulls up to her and says, sorry. Oh, I loved it. <laughs> I loved it. And that's my Christmas story. And every year, if we ever get snow, even if we don't get snow, I ask my dad to do a donut. And we all laugh about that time that mom got smashed with snow and it's a good time. And I recognize, I, by the way, I recognize my mother uh, in this storytelling didn't come off as, as the most cheerful person. She's a wonderful person. Very cheerful. It's just, you guys know, like, how mom and dad get stressed before events. That's what I'm trying to portray. It wasn't any real big deal. I don't want to act like my mother is Ebenezer Scrooge or anything. So this Christmas, I hope you guys make some memories. I know it's a tougher time right now. I had some viewers tell me on the stream recently that, uh, you know, they're unable to be with their family due to COVID and things like that. But I hope we all can make some special memories or at least remember the awesome memories we had in the past. Now, back to the game. Guys, we have a cut through from Red. Red must know Fatsob's reputation. He has completely avoided this, and he is starting to cut through. And if you look at Fatsob's point of view, Fatsob knew the outpost was there, but he doesn't know anything else is happening. Now, I watched through this recorded game already, and there's actually a line of trees here. We can't really tell because the trees are so big, but there is actually a little bit of a line uh, that Red is trying to make, and Red is trying to hit Fatsob before Fatsob's eco kicks in and before Fatsob can make a lot of units because Fatsob, he's dedicated to the walls because he's slow, okay? Uh, now, I think that Red is a fairly skilled player to be able to full off, pull off this fast imp, and currently, the whole thought process is... You know, apply all this pressure as soon as possible. So the vill count doesn't necessarily need to be that high for me to be impressed with this type of a build. I think Viking Fast Imp into Forward Castle is a very well thought out strat. It's unfortunate that he's just not going to be able to make it through the trees. And it's just going to take him a long time to, to have any success here. So I always feel a little bad if I tell stories, FYI. Um, because some of you guys might want me to talk about the game every time and apologies if you do but it's like It's freaking black forest and they're booming right now. I've got to talk about something is kind of how I tend to see it uh, But as we go back to the game, I am so happy to see it fat slob has not changed his landing pad His landing zone look at this. This is where he sends his new vills right to that open spot He always leaves a little open grass spot so he knows where to look for his new villagers <laughs> and I, I've been critical of this in the past, but now I, I look for that spot, and that spot makes me happy. It's weird, though. Sometimes he uses it, sometimes he doesn't. Like, right now, he sent the gather point to the wood line, which is what I would typically suggest. And fat Slob doing Fat Slob things. Gotta love him, man. Gotta love him. Dude's playing on an old platform, old balance. Refuses to change. <laughs> Refuses to change. I'm kind of the same way, except it's with Age of Empires, you know? I don't want to play any other games, but I will gladly accept the new version, as I very much like the Definitive Edition. Okay, so Red has made it halfway through. See, when I was watching this the first time, I didn't realize he had actually made it in like that. And if you go to Fatslop's point of view, you might hear the rocks and see the rocks hitting the trees. Yes. It's hard for us to see if there's an opening there, but I believe Red was probably playing with a mod called Small Trees. And Red is waiting. Red can see it with the outpost. Red's making Berserks. This is one of Fatslob's favorite units. He does only have one attack upgrade, but if he can make it through here, Fatslob doesn't have anything yet, and Fatslob is just now massing Scorpions. And Red is in... Oh, nope, he's not in yet. He's got to hit another tree. Please, please await this music, or please enjoy this music while your party is reached. Okay, they're through. There you go. Here they go. And Red's like, yes! 34 minutes isn't bad. I've got 70 vills. I'm going to rush Fat Slop. And this guy doesn't know what's coming. I've seen the videos. I know to get blacksmith upgrades because I'm a beast. 
And here he goes. And unfortunately for him, the scorpions are already out. Now, scorpions do have minimum range. So these berserks are going to close in on them. And the berserks are going to take out these scorpions. Uh, some of those berserks are weak, though. But Fatslob has six military. And that number is going to go down. And to get matters even or make matters even worse for Fatslob. For a second there, he was actually pop capped. So he wasn't able to produce what he needed. Doesn't have very good unit control in the small moments of the game. So he's got the scorpions coming out. Um, unfortunately for him, though, it's not going to happen. But he does get the castle up. He is getting masonry, which gives buildings more HP. And he is also getting fletching. So fletching will help with the attack upgrade on the castle. He then will have more scorpions coming out. And it kind of feels like, as Fatslob has sent villagers to rewall this, and Red is trying to take it out, kind of feels like Fatslob has weathered the storm. But that's more pressure than Fatslob is used to, that's for sure. This fat slob is looking to make more scorpions from the siege workshop over here, and that's his main unit right now, the scorpion. Now, red cut another gap on this side, so more berserks are going to run in. But as red's doing this, he's got to be thinking, is this enough against fat slob? Because while I killed villagers, he's got a castle on this side. So red should know not to run that direction now. That that's an area that's been conquered by fat slob, and now he runs this way. And now he's got to really be frustrated. Like, no! I thought I could break him. I thought I could get in. I had a plan, man. I had a plan. And there's a game, and I, I probably won't be casting it because, quite honestly, <laughs> the player's plan just looked so bad. But there's this cute little game that happened a month ago, and I downloaded the recorded game. And it was similar, where someone tried to cut through quickly, except they tried it in Feudal Age, and they tried towers and whatnot. Um, and the person said, my plan fails so bad, XD, XD, and then he just resigned. <laughs> and it was just so funny, because I love the idea of people getting excited and going in against Fatslov, knowing what he does with a plan. And so for Red, now he pretty much has to accept, oh shoot, this honestly, this didn't work. So what's he going to do? He's going to focus on his base. He's starting to place some farms now all around his eco. He's added a third TC. And uh, so now he's going to think plan B. So in my opinion, it's a pretty good game because you had a cut attempt. Granted, higher rated players maybe could have been more thorough with that. But the guy went fast imp. He's threatening Fatslov, forcing reactions out of Fatslov. And Fatslov's just like, okay, we will wait. We are not ready to attack right now. Attacking is, well, scary. And now there is a um, there is an upgrade that Fatslop always gets that so many people in Age of Empires forget. And this is not just Classic Balance. We're talking in general. And that's Siege Engineers. And Siege Engineers is not cheap. I think it's 600 wood, 500 food, or maybe vice versa. But it gives you plus one range on your trebs. And that extra one range, you can see it here, is enough for him to go against Red's trebs at times, who has only 16 range and, you know, find some success. Here comes Red, though. Red's going to come this way now, and he's going to try and cut through and, and maybe try and cut around. Uh, walls do not have vision, so Fatsob actually cannot see that right now as he just sits back, getting chemistry and getting crop rotation. And if you're a Fatsob fan, you'll know he has a very specific composition that he goes for. I've never once seen him make a uh, light cav. He never makes a stable. He always goes for, and he never goes champions. It's just berserks, scorpions, and onagers and trebs. That is it. It's probably the only time you'll see that composition, only that composition from the Vikings, because regardless of the time you're talking, uh, you would you would tend to see a lot of arbalest from the Vikings at the very least. Red catching up in Vils now. It's not perfect. It's far from it, but he, he's neither is Fatsob and. When you set yourself behind in town centers, when you try and go fast Imperial, it is going to take some time to catch up. But he does have his three TC's, cre TCs creating vills. And now he's hitting Fatslob's wall, which Fatslob can actually see. So now that that wall is being attacked, the wall will give you vision on it. You always get vision on what's hitting you, I guess, is what I should say. And so now Fatslob says, hmm, do I still have the wall there? Hmm, we're going to just wheel our trebs forward. And I mean, Red doesn't see Fatslob because, you know, there's no reason for him to see this. So 
doesn't really have an idea. He might see the Trebs, though. So there's... I can't tell if there's a gap there anymore, but Red might be tempted to run through there with his Berserks. Over here. I noticed Red made a Siege Workshop, but remember, he didn't even get Relics. So this Relic he'd have to cut for. This Relic he actually could get. He's not thinking about that, or at least he wasn't. He was thinking more about having immediate effect against Fatslob. This game is going to go late. They usually do. Honestly, fat slob games are either someone rushes fat slob before 10 minutes and they somehow break through his walls or they go late. That's just kind of how he likes it. And you can see him sitting back with his streps, just going after red streps, which is some of the funniest things. He loves to sit behind his walls. And if I'm red, I would say, uh, maybe I need to back away for the time being. That would be a good idea. Here he comes with his onagers, though. And Fatslob can see that. Now let's see if Fatslob will try and fire on those. Uh, he's firing on the Treb. It does have his own onagers, of course, but Fatslob has to be careful here. Trebs are not very accurate, so he would have to hit these onagers when they're not moving, usually. Fatslob has his own onagers. It looks like he's intentionally pulled that forward here. And oh, the Treb gets one. So we know Fatslob sees it. Remember, he also has Siege Engineers. He's going to get the, the next one. Um, He still has everything alive here. Red's going to click the Trebs. You'd think Red's going to get at least one Treb, but he loses that one too. Now he's going to get one Treb. There we go. Red will get one Treb. Then I think he loses this. Can he get two? Oh! Okay, congratulations. You got a Scorpion. So I don't know the exact math there, but that's actually pretty good for Fatslob because four onagers seems more expensive than one Treb, one Scorp. Fatslob has 3,000 gold. And that is, that's a lot of gold. That is a lot of salmon right there. As Red finally gets Elite Berserk. And again, he has caught up when it comes to the Eco. Um, he doesn't have any relics right now. Uh, Fatslob can get those relics. Fatslob should have three in a second because he's got this one and he's got this one over here, which his monk is waiting for. Look at him go. Yep, he's waiting. And so now we kind of back up and Red's going to... I think he forgot about this Treb, honestly. And Red is just going to have to wait for that next wave. And He's thinking about everything. He's currently getting pikemen. He's getting leather archer armor. He's getting bracer. Again, what's unique about Fatslob is he does not make any quote-unquote trash units. He never makes skirms. He never makes pikes. Every unit that he makes always costs gold. Except he gets excellent value from his armies. And that ends up being the difference. I think a very noob thing to do. And, and not even a noob thing. I mean, a smart thing to do in games that go late is make a lot of units that don't cost gold. Because gold is a finite resource. It's hard to have gold long term. Siege Engineers! Boom! And Red, where are you going, buddy? Okay, well, that didn't work out for you, did it? <laughs> Whoops. He's making more onagers, though. And he, he's making the barracks now. And he's he's just trying to figure out a way or or just a possibility uh, breaking Fatslob. He does have Elite Berserk. We haven't seen any Berserks from Fatslob yet. Oh, I lied. He's got some here. But Fatslob's still pretty far behind on some of those upgrades. Relic number three for Fatslob. But man, I just love how Fatslob plays the same way all the time. Like, I don't know Fatslob. But I feel like we all know Fatslob. Like, he's a long-lost friend who enjoys to sip his, his uh, whiskey as he plays some Age of Empires. Um, I, I feel like... I want to know more about Fatslob. You know, he's a mysterious character to play these settings. He's probably the only person in history who has played these settings consistently. And he still plays. So I, I have a watch list on profiles, and I will just occasionally go to my watch list and see how all my legends are doing. And Fatslob is the one that I'm always scared is just going to stop playing someday. He has had a couple month periods where he wouldn't play. He's been a little less active these days, but he still plays. He played two games in December. He played about six to eight games in November. And I, I just love to see him. Uh, it just feels... It's such a nostalgic thing. I think it's just because I've been making content for so long. 
And I don't do a lot of fat slob games, so to be able to look back and see fat slob is still cranking away, just like the old days, you know, just like the days where I had, I didn't even have 20,000 subscribers on the YouTube channel it was super, super cool. Um, it's a weird time right now. Like, um, you know, if you're if you're really active in the scene, it's a very awkward time right now. I think for many Age of Empires two fans. Uh, Age of Empires 4 just came out. Some people love it. Some people hate it. Some people are torn. Some people are just addressing that differently. Some people are excited um, for Age of Empires 2 that a new game, game came out. Some people are worried. Um, to make matters even crazier for some of you guys, you know, I, I left Twitch. I no longer stream on Twitch. I made a move to Facebook Gaming, which we'll talk a little bit more about here in a second. I know it's a weird time. So in this weird time... I mean, guys, I'm dedicated to doing this for a very long time, which is one of the reasons I made the move. I want to protect myself, my future, and my family. Um, but you guys don't have to worry about me with Age of Empires 2. If I can come back here and just be mystified by Fat Slob and enjoy Fat Slob, you don't need to worry about me. So if you want that consistency with Age of Empires 2, I, I, I don't know the long-term future of the game. I hope it continues to get support. I think it will for the foreseeable future, but... The long term, when I'm 50, when I'm 60, who knows? We don't, we don't need, uh, this game could go back to looking like this again. Uh, we don't need all the fancy tools and craziness we have today. I think we'll, we'll be able to push through. Um, and I want to say thanks, like a really big thanks. To the people who, uh, have understood the, just the longevity aspect that weighs on your mind as a content creator. Um, it's a really big thing, right? I've had a couple, like, pretty sizable years for for me anyways uh for an age of empires 2 guy like whoa like what how how are there so many of you listening right now that's crazy to me um but also at the same time i don't know if i'll be able to to have a fan base in the future right like there's all those unknowns um and that, that could come with any other job too right but um quite honestly there's there's one thing that i've known Ever since I started making content, as Fatslob is really gearing up here with the Berserks. There's one thing I've known since I started making content, is that uh, I love to make content. I love Age of Empires 2. Um, but when there's other factors involved, when platforms won't dedicate themselves to you and, like, you know, try and try and keep you and fight for you and they don't quite honestly care about you. I, I tried to reach out to Twitch so many times get excited about events i tried to reach out to twitch so many times see if they they had interest any interest in having a conversation with me much less keeping me on their platform a gaming platform where i'm do was doing pretty decent things i thought um didn't feel any value there and i've also felt like um a little let down by microsoft in terms of age of empires 2 as well and so it's just all this stuff happening all this stuff happening i want to make content i want to make content 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 kind of led to a moment where I'm like, you know what? This is an amazing opportunity for me. And that's that's one of many reasons why that platform switch came in. And you guys have been really supportive. On YouTube, so supportive. Even if you're not watching those streams, and I'll have some awesome stuff there, but all that stuff's going to come on YouTube. So I would just want to say thanks. Um, you know, time flies. I casted this 1,438 days ago. 1,438 days ago, I lived in a completely different state. I was honestly a completely different human being. But whatever changes <laughs> may come our way, baby. Age of Empires 2 and T90 official is uh, is a marriage ma marriage made for life. Does that make sense? Isn't a marriage supposed to be for like a match made in heaven? That sounds better. So um, whatever changes in your life, guys, happen. However frequently you watch me, Fat Slob's gonna be there, and I'm gonna be there. And I know I take these opportunities to rant and get a little feelsy, but it's important to me I do that. Um, and I can't wait. There's going to be a time, man, where I can be more specific on all the stuff I just, just touched on. I think there will be a little more clarity, but for now, we're going to leave it all at that. As Red tried, okay? Red tried to do something earlier. It, it wasn't that exciting. It was just 10 or 15 berserks. But hey, I commend him for giving it a shot. And now, Fatsob is actually opening this up. Ever so slowly, opening this up and waiting. So this is Red's point of view. Red does not see any of this. Um, see, Fatslob is now selling some wood to get some gold. He's got plenty of gold banked up. 
And that's a really important thing to do, by the way. Um, be the first person to drain the market of prices. Because eventually, selling 100 wood, you're only going to get 14 gold in, uh, in return. Um, at least I think that... I don't know if Vikings get guilds. If Vikings get guilds and you research that, then it goes to 17. But anyways, there's a certain period of time where the prices are really high and you get a lot of gold in return. So one of the best things you can do in late game scenarios is full boom and then drain the market of prices. That way when they sell, they're just getting that, uh, that 14 gold in return. Now, check this out. Fatslob is doing the old trick. This bug is not, it does not exist in the definitive edition anymore. But if you were to place building foundations and the enemy runs over it, you can actually see where they are. It looks so obnoxious and you can't place palisades where there's already a unit or a building, which is why it looks so random because he tried to just place stuff as many times as possible. But it's smart thinking from him. And I don't know if he can actually see that, that fiery ball. That seems like a, another thing. Oh, wait, did it go over the palisade? Wait, hold on. Let's see if we can see this again. I'm still learning things about this game. Let's see if we can see the fiery ball over the palisade, because I think that might be the explanation as to why it popped up. He did see a pikeman, which shouldn't scare him. Oh boy, he's creeping forward. Greg, can you fire again, please? I can't rewind with this. The pikemen just get eaten. By siege. That's all likes his berserks in front and then the siege behind and his trebs behind that. That's what Fat Sob likes. And so far we have 26 kills, 22 deaths for Fat Sob. And he is going to add some walls here. Doesn't really see much. What am I hearing? I'm hearing stuff being destroyed. Oh, he's deleting his walls! And this is Red's point of view, and Red can see this. Those walls weren't protecting me. Those walls were protecting you. And here he comes. The Red Scout has been attacking that wall for the whole game. He started with the Palisades, and now he's attacking the Fortified Wall. I honestly, I feel like Fatslub should have the courtesy to let the Scout finish the wall. You don't have anywhere to be, Fatslub. Come on, man. Don't, don't kill the Scout. The Scout's been doing that all day. No. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. He doesn't want to waste the attack noise on the scout. Oh, and he gets the onagers. Red is very much aware of what's going on now, and Fatslub can see this army. Fatslub also rolling through the gap that Red cut, and Red is over here, but Red is actually kind of, like, trapped. He tried to click through, which did not work at all. But speaking of not working, Fatslub, this is why you sit back there, buddy. This is why you sit back. Trying to be aggressive did not work out too well for him there. Um, okay, I was gonna say Red finally realizes with the Berserks that he can attack here. And oh, wait, can he go through there? Sorry, I'm very confused. And I know the game just got really slow all of a sudden, so I'll cast accordingly. I I think it's blocked off. Otherwise, nope, it's not blocked off. But Red was gonna lose these units either way, I think. And now Red can at least see and warn the others that there's scorpions there. <laughs> oh no, the scout died to the trebs. And Fatslob is still trying to open this up. Now guys, let's talk about Fatslob's army. He's got 93 army. He's got full upgrades. He's got a diverse army comp. Red tried to kill really fast. Red now has the same thing with Onager's trebs, but he's gone pikemen. They do have extra HP with Vikings, but still, he's got Pikemen. And now he's falling back with Fat Substrats and he's stonewalling. So, if you're not pop capped here, Red, you better at least make sure that you have a pretty good uh, building layout with castles to be able to make more units. And he's actually focused on this over here. He snagged this relic a little while ago. That looks very satisfying to me. I've been playing Roller Coaster Tycoon recently. And uh, that just reminds me of a path or something <laughs> in that game. I love nostalgic games. I'm such an old fart, man. Now, Karate Kid doesn't have Siege Engineer, so he's got 16 range on his trebs. And it's it's 17 range for Fatslob. Again, an upgrade that a lot of people miss out on. Coinage also is not an upgrade that benefits you in a 1v1. That is That reduces the tax when you send resources to an ally. I think Red is probably confusing Coinage 
and maybe even banking with something that gives you resources. I'm going to make a video in January, the top five most confusing technologies in Age of Empires, and coinage and banking are two of them, because you think you research something involving a coin, you're going to get resources in return. <laughs> or like banking, right? And if you only play 1v1s, some of the things that apply to team games are there, and, you know, it's just something... You gotta read it, I guess. But Heated Shot, also at the top of the list. We'll see if that comes in. Anyway, yeah, Red just backed away, kind of, sort of. Uh, Fatslop backed away, kind of, sort of. And this is the type of game that Fatslop likes. And Fatslop with three relics, and he has brought in a lot of resources. That is for sure. He did sell a lot of his wood. Did sell some food to get gold, too. Um, also, I think it's possible... Let me look. He's not actually mining any gold right now. Red is still mining gold over here. There's about 2,000 there. There's gold here. That's going to be another 100. Um, Red has two relics now. So good job from Red to work his way towards those. Fatslob didn't mine this gold. So this is one of the neutrals. Um, the other neutral, I think, was over here. And now I forget. Were these stone miners? Those were stone miners. Where was it? Honestly, I think this might have been it. This three-tile gold right here. That would make sense. I do recall Fatslob was definitely benefited from one of the neutrals. Actually, it might have been that one. I could be wrong. You guys will know if you're watching the video. I forget already. Red at 200 population, 80 army. I'd love to see Red sell some of that wood right now. I think that would be a really good move as we... Slowly build up, very slowly build up towards an eventual battle. That's Slob just destroying trees at the moment. <laughs> just destroying those trees. Zappers for, for red, wow, okay. Zappers means villagers do extra bonus damage against buildings. And there we go, now he's selling some of that wood. Probably could sell more of that for gold. It's fascinating to me how much gold Fatslop has. I mean, he he has incredible army number as well. I think 100 villagers, 100 army is a pretty good structure to this. The game does say he has 18 idols, so he could sort that out. How many farms does he have? 37. Okay, whereas red has... What? What? 37? 36, I'm sorry. No, 37! What are the odds, man? What are the freaking odds of that? Okay, wow. So 37 farm build order. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The 37 farm build order. Everyone knows that. Jeez. I need one YouTube commenter to, to have some elaborate comment about how the 37 farm build order is the most basic Age of Empires thing just to confuse people who skip through the video. Can I have someone do that? I don't need everyone to do it. If you want to, whatever. But just one person. Just just make a comment. And then the other people are going to watch and they're going to be super confused. They're going to be like, what? Like, I don't know. Say it was in the tutorial or something. You guys are more creative than me. However many people watch this. Let's say 10,000 people watch this. 10,000 collective minds is more creative than I could ever be on my own. That's for damn sure, so... Okay, Fatslob knew about this for a while now, so he runs in with his Berserks. Again, I'm casting with an old program which isn't supported anymore. We've got Present Day Capture Age, which is a different program. This is the OG Capture Age at the old Voovoli platform. So occasionally things just like speed up and slow down. Things get louder at times too. Those Berserks just got hit, but they don't take any damage. Oh, I wanted to see actually. Can I click that one? Let me look at a weak one for a second. There, there, it's healing. So he does have Berserker Gang. Berserker Gang means that Berserks heal up. That text still exists. I'm not sure if Red has that. But Red says, you know what? This seems like a really good idea. I'm just going to stack my Scorpions in the choke point. Because that's what Fatslob's doing. And I'm just going to play his game. <laughs> Adding Siege Workshops. Fatslob's base. This is such a big thing about his play. It's so smart for if he were to ever get pushed. Look, forward siege workshops, but then he's got back siege workshop. The castles is really the biggest thing for me. He's got all of his castles on the back. He never once makes a forward castle. A lot of players will make castles like red made here, and it could lead to red maybe being down a castle. 
if it comes down to trebuchet or berserk production later on. Now, I think that Red's economy, I know it doesn't show it in the stats, but I think his economy has been stronger just because he's had... Wait a second. It says he has 116 vills, but is that 28 idle? Is that 28 idle? I think it is. Okay, where are they? Three here. The thing is, I'm not seeing 28 idle. Two there. Um... That's weird. The number's going up. Does he have it in a building? Guys, I have no answers there. But what I was going to say is 110 villagers does bring in slightly more wooden food over time. And then I could, that could just be led to him. Oh, he deleted vills. Holy crap, what? But yeah, that could just allow him to sell some more res later on. Okay, that's bothering me so much. I don't want people calling me blind now. It says he has 26 idle. Do I have an idle villager hotkey here? Okay, that's fat slop. That makes sense. That feels like 10. But red. Oh my god, they're hiding everywhere. Oh man, they're just everywhere. Oh, you're not. Okay. Yep. He's got all these vills in here. All these vills in here. Oh yeah, hard to see. Okay. So red deleting vills. And perhaps getting a little impatient as he is starting to widen the gap a little bit with his own trebs. And here he comes with scorpions. Scorpions that still do not have siege engineer. Oh no, he got siege engineers. Well done. Now he's got eight range on the scorpions. That's up sees that. And so what will he do? He brings forth the onagers. Onagers counter scorpions. Berserks counter onagers. Berserks get countered by scorpions, and the Trebs is there for the rest. It's this little triangle of counters. I had the red. <laughs> red, 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 red. Don't you dare run out into the darkness here. I don't think he knows he's been spotted by Fatslob. I really don't think he knows he's been seen. Oh, God. See, the last thing he saw was Berserks. Uh-oh, wait. Back away. Back away. Abort. 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 <laughs> abort, please. Uh, oh, no. Okay, he sees it. Now, the worst thing about scorpions is that they stack on top of each other. That's 14 scorpions. You can actually stack like 50 scorpions on the two tiles when you run through woodlines. See what they do? They get stuck. Oh, no, his trebs. Did his trebs just block it? Oh, my God. Well, Fatslop seems to be scared of red strebs. So he actually ended up backing away. This is just thrilling stuff. Someone asked me recently, is Age of Empires going to die at some point? What do you think? Nope. Because people will still watch this crap to death. How can it ever die? This is crazy. This is ridiculous. More trebs for Fatslop. Let's do a count here. He's got... Uh, nine, two, he's got 11-ish trebs, more on the way, so we'll say 12, 15. Red's got nine. What I really like with the old capture age is that, and I think you can do it with new capture age now, is you can, uh, check how many kills they've had and how many shots they've fired. Look, the hit rate for the trebs is 1.9%. So I don't know if that figures in when they fire on trees, so it probably does count that as a miss just checking here and i uh, didn't actually count that now look at red red's doing the same thing so i can't avoid these little palisades red's doing the same thing for vision so these guys are experienced man red might not have played this many games but i think he's watched the videos he tried to take the karate kid name but there was already someone who uh who used that name so he went with the two d's I mean, I respect it. Whatever. See, he can see them rolling in now. Little cheater. Or maybe, maybe Jason Kidd, legendary NBA player. Maybe Jason Kidd plays on Vubly. Is that possible? Maybe. How many people are surprised at that NBA reference right there? I know some of you are. You're like, what? I, I watch on occasion. <laughs> Everything's too dramatic for me nowadays. Too much drama. I just, I just want to watch the sport. I, I will occasionally watch in the playoffs, but that's about it. But when I was a kid, you know, and I had more time, I'd, I'd go out there and I'd play some basketball. 
Oh, I thought of a funny story. Okay, real quick. I'm not going to go long story on this because I already jawed about Christmas for too long earlier. But I used to have a, a, a Zanga profile, which was kind of like a blog before MySpace. And I wanted to be seen as really cool, but I was really short, okay? So I had this ramp that I built so I could... <laughs> we had a really low basketball hoop, but I was still too short to dunk. So I made a ramp. And I would run up the ramp and dunk. And so I had my buddy take a picture. I walked to the very tip of the ramp, got my tiptoes, and it looked like I was slam dunking, like action style. And I had my buddy take a bunch of photos. And I had that, no joke, as my profile picture for like three months. And I would made sure to tell people like, yeah, that's me dunking. Even though I was like five foot one. <laughs> and... uh yeah, I could not dunk at all. Wait, man, how does this stuff... I think I have a problem. I don't know how this random stuff comes into my brain. I apologize. It really should have gotten to a point where I edit content at this point. Like, why do I let myself sit here and just talk myself out of a fan base? This is embarrassing. And guys, the amount of times I've restarted recording videos because of one two-minute segment within an hour-long recording where I feel like an idiot and I feel bad and I restart is just embarrassing. So nowadays... I don't do that as much because it's just such a time waster. <laughs> it's it's not great. That's love going for the castle. Remember we said Red built his castle forward. It's a very awkward wall here with Fatslob's trebs. But I don't know if Fatslob can really get any units around here. He's bringing in his onagers. I think if he takes out the castle, considering he's got so much gold. I think Fatsub will end up feeling okay about that and just back up. And it is a traffic jam here. It is rush hour. Um, Castle goes down, though, for Red. That's, that's a certainty. And Red's onagers need to be careful. There's some berserks. Why is this going so slow motion? Man. Okay. Again, my apologies. This is a very old version of the game. I cast on this version maybe once or twice a year, and I always remember, always forget to remember to message someone to see if we can optimize this. There's no way to optimize it. It's not supported anymore. We're stuck. And if I cast with the actual game, the graphics don't make any sense for my setup. We're making it work, though. And, you know, honestly, maybe it has to do with their PCs, too. Who knows? But let's see if Fatslob makes the same mistake that others would. Did you see that? Fatslob thought about it. There was a moment there where Fatsub was going to try and run through that choke point right into the Scorpions. A lot of players have made that mistake. And instead, he's firing with Trebs on the Scorpions and hitting them. And Red's now got to be careful. If you look at Red's vision, Red can see the Scorpions are back here. So he can't run in to engage the Onagers with his Berserks. And now he's regretting running into the choke point with his Scorpions as they all go down. Red, though, with similar military numbers to Fatsub. If he were to sell his wooden food, I think he'd be fine when it comes to the golds. At this point, there still is some gold being mined by Red. He's got about, um, I can't click it. I'm sorry. He's got 200 gold there. And then it comes down to the relics, which Fatslop has three. So he has more gold trickle. Those relics can be a little unfair on Black Forest. I think what they do nowadays is they generate an even amount instead of the fifth one. I personally like five. But maybe for Black Forest, you should have the fifth one in the middle or something, you know? Fatslob would still get it then, because he walls like crazy at the start, but... Wow, Fatslob having some str some struggles here. Uh, losing quite a few trebuchets and might even need to back up and make more of them. Red has quite a few pikemen here, and I'm just curious if Red is ever going to dive in. Remember, at the start of this game, Red had a strat. He tried to cut through real early. By the time he got in there, Fatslob had just enough. Fatslob had his castle, Fatslob had scorpions, and then Fatslob ended up extending it to this stage of the game. Farm check. We have 43 farmers against 37 farms. <laughs> Fatslob's at 37. He doesn't care to change that. Is he still of idols, though? Okay, this is red. Yeah, Red's still got some idle villagers, that's for sure. Fatslob, probably the same. Oh, yep. Okay, they're all right there, actually. Now, Fatslob is going to back away for now. 
Isn't this exciting? I think this is really exciting. Hey, I would like to take this moment to say shout out. Oh, wait a second. I know this name. Shout out to Ken Beamer. In June of 2021 at 2.30 a.m. my time, he commented on Fatslob's profile. This was June 25th of 2021. He says, I lose most of my matches, but I am very impressed by your gameplay. I wish to battle you one day just to see how things will turn out. Such a wholesome message. And there's a few other messages on Fatslob's profile, which I will read before this video is over. But what's so exciting about that, guys, is that I saw the comment, but not who made that comment uh, just before I did this recording. And Ken Beamer has actually been fairly active on the Facebook gaming stream. <laughs> so I want to say thanks to him, man, for showing up and supporting me. But also, it's so cool. That was, what, six months ago? I'll have to ask him about that. He's probably going to be freaking out like, what? I got mentioned. Imagine if he's trying to fall asleep to my content right now. Just about to doze off. That's right. I know you're out there. I know you're trying to sleep. I know you can. And then I wake him up. I say his name. <laughs> oh, geez. I don't know if it's a username or, or if it's a... I mean, it sounds kind of like a first name, last name deal. There is also someone who said Road to 2K on Fatslob's profile, but his name was Slick Daddy. So first name Slick, last name Daddy, or maybe that's a, a username. Hey, you can use usernames on the new on the new platform, so takes a little bit more work, a little bit more headache for the time being, but things should be pretty good in a few months, I think. Um, man, there we go, Red. There we go, Karate Kid starting to sell some wood, just getting some gold banked, and uh, he also placed a gold tile there, or, or sorry, a palisade tile there, so we could see if Fatslob took that gold. Now, this must be a casting bug, where if you do the Fog of War, it doesn't show the gold. But he could see it. And so now he'll know that there's no Vils over there. There's quite a few tricks you can do in the old Age of Empires. Let me know if you guys are interested in making a video on bugs that used to exist. I think that'd be really cool. We could actually do multiple episodes. I'm honestly going to do it anyways. Look, Red forgot. This is funny, guys. Red forgot... To click the villagers back to work. So he sent them to place the Palisade Foundation, essentially. And they're walking somewhere as he tried to place the Palisade Foundation. Obviously, they're just going to die. Okay, one hour, 20 minutes game time. We're an hour into this game. This is where things start to ramp up. I know some people probably skipped through this video. It's just the nature of the biz. You guys got some places to be, so I'll just say it again. Merry Christmas. Thanks for the support. I hope you guys are excited for more content. We've got new legends, community games, high-level 1v1s. I'll be hosting some tourneys. And uh, as I was saying earlier, man, um, I, I don't know a lot about my future, but I have a few ideas of kind of how I want things to go, and I want to do this for a very long time. I made a joke the other day that... So, so I always say it depends when people ask questions. So my joke for a while has been that when we're all old and in the retirement home, I'm going to have a brand sponsorship with Depends Diapers for all the adult diapers, okay? So keep supporting me, and in like 40, 50 years, when we're all old and gray, you can get 10% off your adult diapers, okay? But I also said we should have an AOE2 retirement home. We're going to have mega arthritis. Our backs are going to be shot. We'll be like, oh, okay, I'm going to go trush. And, you know, oh, it just be so good. We can invite Fat Slob! That slob could be there. He might be a couple decades ahead of us. I don't know. I personally believe, because his profile says he's 72. I personally would like to believe he's like late 50s, early 60s. Because it says 31st of December, 1949 is his birthday. But I think 31st of December is a default thing when you go to make a profile. Either that or January 1st sound like default. So he clearly changed the year, and maybe he was just lazy, you know, when he selected the year. Batslob did treb cut all the way through here, so he's going to try and get that gold now. That's something Red will actually be able to see. And to be honest, Red could see the trebs are here. I mean, Red could have gotten to this gold a long time ago. So you should have no complaints about that. But yeah, the Palisade bug should show the vills. But wouldn't that be so cool? Man, just think of all... Think, think of the business aspect of that right 
I'm sure that we would just fill retirement homes and we always turn away people who like modern day video games. Oh, that's amazing. All the kids are going to be doing their VR flying around in hover pads. Actually, I really want a hover pad. Maybe maybe we'll discover aliens at that point. I, I actually I take it all back. We'll invite the aliens. Aliens can can come in and their UFOs and we'll play some maybe too. That's that's a crazy thought. I think later on in my career I probably won't be streaming to the to the same number of hours I currently stream and will for the next few at least. Um and I think I'm honestly, I'm still gonna do AW2. I'm gonna make sure the YouTube channel is always stacked with content. But I think I'm just gonna I'm gonna become a crazy person who does an occasional podcast every now and then. I don't know how many of you guys would be down for that. And I, I don't want you guys to get the wrong idea, like I'm some crazy like conspiracy guy. Not that believing aliens might exist as conspiracy, but I just like I, I really like to think about what could be the unknown stuff, like the ocean. Oh, ho, 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 what's down there? Or in the case of the space, what's up there? You know, there's no way there's not something else out there. There's no way we're the only planet with life. They've got to like Age of Empires. What if they're way better than us? What if they figured out fat slot by now? But yeah, you see what I mean? Red can see the little blue villagers there, so that will be a sign that... Red, if he wasn't already getting a little perturbed and frustrated and stumped, that he will be now. Now, there's no army value stat, but in present-day Age of Empires, there's always an army value stat I cast with. And that is really important because it talks about the amount of resources that a player invested into their army... And in theory, granted, there are kind of exceptions in terms of how the army's used, but in theory, the largest army value is the more successful army. The stronger army. Berserks, more expensive than pikemen. 66 HP on a pikeman, 4 base attack. Berserks got freaking 72 HP with 14 base attack. There's a big difference there, not to mention other stats like attack speed. Trebs are expensive, Onager's expensive, Scorpion's expensive, Red trying to save resources. But it's also possible that he could just get pushed up the gut and lose a lot of control. Um, Man, the amount of idols both of these players have is really infuriating, though. I don't mean to be, like, a, a backseat gamer nerd here, but, like, guys, there's not that much else going on. <laughs> if you were to just delete your idol vills, you'd have 10 more military. And it'd be the same economy-wise because they're not working right now. But it also does feel like it's harder to see things in classic Age of Empires 2 now that I go back. Definitely feels harder to spot various things. And also, there's no select all idle hotkey anymore. Or not anymore, but back then they didn't have it. Why did Red make a wall here? That's interesting. Just in case Fatslab comes through or something? But yeah, I can't live without a few things that Age of Empires 2 DE has. Um... The quality of life features just make the game so much easier to play and so much more enjoyable to play. Actually, it's interesting, you know, how we played Age of Empires 2 the way it was for so long because even being able to see how many villagers you have on each resource, which we don't have here in the casting overlay, but having that in the game is such a helpful thing. Back then, I used to always double-click my farms. If a build order was like, okay, you're going scouts, you need to have 16 farms, go up to Castlage, I'd have to click. And I would never go 37. <laughs> that sub's a beast. So this gap is widening here in the center. That much is certain. I want to say that's about two tiles in there now. Red's still not really ready for this. I think he's still placing Palisades. Yeah, look, he tried to place Palisades here. So now his Vills are going to walk through again. Unless he's realized. I think he might have realized. I don't know. I'm just wondering how this game's going to end. I promised people on the subreddit, the Age of Empires 2 subreddit, that I would cast a game. And that game I still need to get to tonight. Recording it all in one session. Recording this on a Monday night. We've got Loey the Legends to be streamed and then cool stuff to be uploaded to the YouTube channel on a Tuesday. Wednesday, I freaking play in an Age of Empires 2 tournament. Wish me luck, everyone. I'm probably loose. And then, I'm confident, aren't I? And then, that evening, I'm home with family. One thing I'm really looking forward to is actually spending time within an actual black forest. Uh, my my uh, family has a little cabin in the middle of nowhere. 
have to drive on 30 minutes of gravel roads to the till you get to the wilderness in Pennsylvania. I'm going to shut my phone off. I'm going to there, there will be no technology and I'm just going to enjoy it. It'll be freaking cold. I'm a Floridian now. Um, so I'm probably going to freeze my nuts off, but I'm just looking forward to relaxing a little bit. And guys, I might even read a book. Shocker. I used to read when I was a kid. Not a kid. When I was like 18, 19, 20, I liked to read. And then I kind of fall out of, uh, fell out of obsession with it. Oh my goodness. I could have read a whole book here. These guys are still being so patient. <laughs> I just love it though. Like... The, the fact that Fatslav always plays this way and loves to play this, this way is amazing to me. He's sitting here with the Trebs to give him vision just in case. And I think it's going to happen soon. I think they're gearing up. Um, Red has been sitting here with these pikemen for far too long. He also only sees Trebs right now. So there's definitely going to be a part of him that believes that maybe he can catch Fatslav off guard. Maybe. What I would like to see Red do is send in one unit. It's an underrated move, especially at this stage of the game. Sacrifice one unit for the cause. Don't be so attached to him, okay? It's just a unit. And just let it die so you can see what's back there. I mean, the positioning from Fatslop really is beautiful. It's just a shame that this whole this whole glitch with the Palisades kinds of <laughs> kind of ruins how this plays out because it gives him extra vision. Fatsub can see it too. Fatsub can see scorpions and pikemen. I just want to know... And this is an interesting thought. So, I know Fatsub knows the videos exist. But I don't think Fatsub is someone who really watches a lot of Age of Empires videos and streams and all that. And obviously he's played the game since 2007 at least. That's just the data we have on file. Or on record. So... At what point did Fatsub learn that trick? And how did he learn that trick? Where did that tidbit of knowledge come into play? Did he accidentally build something and come to the natural conclusion that that's a way to do it? I know what I learned. I learned in 2013 playing online in a team game and a teammate did it and then I saw it. But like, don't you wish you knew when that trick originated? That would be really cool. Here comes Red though. Players are getting antsy. Fatsub loses his treb. And Red is he's doing the fat sob himself. He's bringing in the scorpions. And these berserks are producing a little bit of a meat shield for the siege behind. But they will get chewed up. And they're going to, I guess, take out the onagers first. And fat sob scared after seeing the scorpions runs away. And fat sob really not taking the best of fights. Um, I mean, the KD's fine. But, uh, oh, wait. Did he click that onager? Wow. Oh, no, he didn't. Oh, wait, did he? I don't know. <laughs> It's going to get messy. It's going to get super messy here. Uh, it also adds to the effect when it slows down. And I'm getting apologies about that one. I know you guys put me on 1.2 times speed anyways. Because when people show up to my streams, they're like, you sound so tired. What's the deal? And I don't blame you guys for that. I've actually listened to myself on 1.2 times speed. Or 1.25 speed is what I meant to say. Um... It's not bad. It makes the games go a little faster. And, you know, you still get the point across. And you still... You get through my dumb jokes a little faster, too. Hey, by the way... If you do... If you haven't sped my voice up before, try it. And go to the fastest it goes right now. Okay, the fastest it can get. Just experience the, ne the next 10 to 15 seconds. And then I want you to turn it down to the lowest. It sounds like I'm on drugs. <laughs> and this is a big fight. Maybe even rewind to experience all the speeds. It's all about the experience. Fat Slob, 2021. Last game you'll see from him in 2021. And he, the pikes arrive for Red, finally. I mean, the game is even slowed down for us. There's all different types of speeds here, just confusing everyone. We've got the pikemen going in after the onagers. They're actually, like, you could say that that's worth it. You could definitely say that's worth it because they contributed with a meat shield. And they took out gold units. So I think the pikemen in that instance were actually worth it. But Fatsop has a ring of trebs. More trebs than I've ever seen from him. He's got 15. And these trebs actually have 15 kills in this game. You can see that at the bottom right. And Fatsop is going to send in his onagers. 
And he's going to send in his Berserks here. And here come more Pikemen from Red. Fat Sob sees this. Fat Sob doesn't like it. And he's going to try and defend his precious Trebs. Trebs on one side of the forest. Trebs on other side of the forest. It is a very even duel right now. But it's moments like these that I remind you that unit production is one of the most important things in out-and-out -out battles in Age of Empires. So if you look back here, Fatsob actually doesn't have much cued beyond just one castle. Red has this castle, and <laughs> that's about it as well. So similar problems, and blue goes in. Sorry, Fatsob goes in. And to me, it feels like it's worth it if he takes out the Trebs. He takes out one, he takes out two. These things have high attack. I'll take out three. Red could even kill his own here. Red will fire. Watch. He's going to fire on a unit. Really? He's a beast then. A lot of people would accidentally fire. Here, Red's taking out Fat Slob's Trebs at the same time. And he'll lose both those onagers. Oh, no. He won't. Well, okay. That got messy. I mean, after it's all said and done, they both lost about 50 pop. Lots of expensive units died. Fat Slob still has more gold, though. He's still mining more gold as well. Plus has that relic gold. And woo! Alright, that was a that was eventful. I do not think you can ever really complain about gold issues, though, if you have 22,000 wood and 17,000 food. Red simply just sells some of those resources and he'll get all of his gold back. It doesn't seem to be really producing out of these castles. Fatslob is producing and repopping out of all of his castles. Red has to be careful here. Red doesn't have many scorpions. Fatslob is about to be fully popped with berserks. Red has to be really careful here. Red has 24 pikes. Fatslob doesn't have a single unit, which is really a trash unit. Every single unit can dish out a lot of damage. Fatslob's military population is even, but I think that makes his position stronger. Red might not be ready for this right now. As he is going to his market, he is selling. He's definitely thinking about gold. And now Red is maybe a little worried about gold. He's going for man-at-arms. I'm not sure I agree with that. I mean, the argument I could make for going champion instead of berserk is that champions are cheaper. And you can produce them faster because you can produce them out of barracks, which you can make a ton of. But he's only producing out of one castle. And now, okay, now he's producing out of the other. And uh, Fatsob seems confident there for a second. But uh-oh, 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 one for one. What? What? Okay, well, high value shots there from Red. Unfortunately, he didn't get another volley off. And Fatsob keeps his siege alive. Yeah, you see what I mean? I feel like the lack of scorpions for Red is an issue now. He's only got five of them. Fatslob needs to be a little more active with his onagers. Also needs to maybe move his scorpions around so his berserks can get through. If Fatslob chooses to bring his trebs forward. It seems like Fatslob recognizes the weakness here in the enemy. And oh no, he loses his trebs. Oh jeez, this is going to go on for another 20 minutes now. <laughs> oh, we're just getting started. Again, it doesn't feel like red has a really strong structured force now. Hey, uh, fun fact for those who don't know all the old Age of Empires bugs. This will be in that video I, I mentioned if we ever get around to it. And this version in Classic Age of Empires, if a Treb fired a volley, okay, and then the Treb was destroyed while that volley was in the air, the shot would do no damage. So there's instances where Treb Wars happening, and like, this, this castle's on 1 HP. The shot's through the air. The Treb gets taken out. That shot would do no damage. And we didn't really complain about it. Because that was all we had. And that was just kind of how the game worked. All the way up until the Definitive Edition in 2019. I think that's going to be a fun video. I, I, I There's also some bugs that I kind of missed. Like Palisade scanning. But anyways, anyways. I don't want to get too crazy. That slob has 2,000 gold. And counting, of course. He's got relics. And red just like... This is a basic thing. Just popping up after you lose units. Batslob's gonna go for it. He senses there's blood in the water. And he's the black forest shark. And he is choosing to think about running through. Wait a second. Wait a second. Is he baiting the scorps? 
kind of looks like he's baiting the scorpions. If he can get his onagers on the scorpions, then he could make him maybe make a move in. Red realizes what's going on. Fat Slob's Berserk's healing up back here. Onager here from Red on the other side. It's funny how we have two different paths that they've cut. It's also funny how my freaking game slows down every single freaking time here. 37 farms for Fat Slob? Oh, yeah. Wait, 36? No, what happened? <laughs> the 37 farm build order, man. Come on. We've talked about a lot in this game. The 37 farm build order, which everyone knows is the most basic of Age of Empires 2 build orders. My mom getting smashed with snow on Christmas Day. One of my favorite Christmas memories. Um, um, crazy changes with life. 1,438 days since the last Fat Slob upload. My channel was so tiny back then. Still is, but like has really exploded. Somehow you guys found me, enjoy the content, and have stuck around. Um, and lots lots of stuff has happened, but Fatslob isn't ready yet. So Fatslob could also sell, to be fair. He's got wood, he's got food, and God, oh God, Fatslob has made another mistake with these trebs here. <laughs> oh God, he's lost so many. Oh, they're gonna save themselves here, and here we go! Okay, Onager does hit. It's interesting how the Onager still does damage after the Onager goes down. You know? Whereas the Treb would not. Something to investigate. Something to investigate. More Trebs for Red. He feels like Trebs are the missing ingredient now. He left these two Trebs over here, as well as these two Villagers. They are, uh... Oh, they want to keep everyone else away. I see. Okay, all right. All right, have some fun, kids. Be responsible. Leave some room for Jesus over there. Uh, 90 gold remaining there, so pretty soon all the gold is going to be gone on the map. As reflected on the mini-map, actually, with Capture Age. Well done, Capture Age. And hey, we started this game with 780,000 wood, if I remember. We're at 581,000. So this game could go on for a while longer. Wait, you know what I haven't been paying attention to is if the wood count goes down when they chop through a tree with a treb. Come on. Red. Go for it. Hit a tree. Hit a tree. Okay, he's not doing it. He's waiting for Fat Slob. Fat Slob going for the dreaded line of death with the trebs. See, Red's trebs aren't in the line, which means that they might not all be able to hit their target. Fat Slob, are you going to remove your berserks? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Boom. That hurt. That really hurt. He lost quite a few of them there. Look at their pixelated dead bodies. Gruesome stuff. See, if Fat Slob can hit the first line of Red's trips, Red can't use his second line to hit that. You see what I mean? He's got to have everything lined up. Maybe unpack and repack these things. <laughs> Trebuchet is the weapon of choice in this upload from Fat Slob. Because Red just doesn't really feel comfortable diving too much. We are one hour and 42 minutes into this game. And it still kind of feels to me like with the lack of scorpions for Red, Fatsub could make could have some success here. If he can patrol in with his berserks and then immediately follow it up with his siege, I could see Red having some massive problems. But even two scorpions is enough to force Fatsub away. And oh wait, one! Oh, come on, Fat Sub. This is your moment, buddy. This is your moment. Now, the thing is, this is a player who typically likes to wait. He's not the type of player to rush too much. But if you're going to rush, Fat Sub, I would say queue up all your buildings first, spend all your res in a queue, set the gather point forward, then make your move. Because as you're controlling your units on your screen, you have more units come into the, the battlefield ready for orders. It kind of reminded me of Stronghold. We await orders! You, uh, the, the treasury is growing steadily, sire. <laughs> I do actually have some stronghold uploads. They're nothing special. I might do more stronghold content, but, um, don't get your hopes up on that. I really do want to upload some Roller Coaster Tycoon 2 content, but for non-Age of Empires 2 content, it's a silly thing, but, uh, for non-Age of Empires 2 content that I stream, I've kind of got, like, a cap. A cap that's really high on how long the video can be when I upload it. But guess what? 
I play Roller Coaster Tycoon for like eight hours. <laughs> so <laughs> we'll see if that ever happens. We'll see if that ever happens. I think I should probably stick to what I'm good at and what you guys definitely enjoy anyways. But all that stuff's on the stream. Okay, it's slow. It's steady. There's a buildup. Batsob has how many farms? 35 farms now. Oh no, he's falling behind in farm count. The red has just forgotten about the scorpion. There's not even an onager here. Okay, there's an onager for red. Imagine if Fatsob would just bring those scorpions forward a little bit more. He does really seem to be picking off some units with those trebs, though. This group of trebs here, 18 kills. That's a whole lot more than 17, which they had earlier. And here comes the Berserks and the Scorpions. God, I think Red's going to have some population efficiency problems. Those Pikemen are going to look so weak in a big battle. If he can have the numbers of them to maybe have some influence, I get it. But having 43 Pikemen, which is 43 pop space that does very little, except maybe get lucky. Maybe. Because they will get destroyed by the Onagers. They will get destroyed by the Berserks. They will get destroyed by anything. But that is only if Fatsob has the Berserk numbers. And it didn't look like Fatsob had the Berserk numbers. But it, maybe this was planned by him. He only had about 15 here. And now he shows up with a batch of 20 to 25. He's going to have the Scorpions in defense against the Pikes. And watch Red's population at the bottom left. This is what I meant. It's going to take Red so long to replace that many military units. Out of three barracks, anyways. If he had a lot more, maybe it would be different. And he has the gold to make more siege, but I think that he's just been getting frustrated. And when you're microing your units and trying to control your units, and when you're sitting here like, oh my god, is this actually happening to me? I thought I was going to kill him. I thought I was going to rush him to death when all these things are flowing through your mind forget the basics. You forget the things you need to win here. This fat slob has clicked the treb, which I wouldn't necessarily suggest because he's actually passed through a lot of Red's units. But in the end, I think he's going to have more than enough berserks. It's 86 military for fat slob, 46 for Red. And Red's producing some berserks here. He's producing some berserks here. But man, oh man, is he going to have some problems if fat slob brings the scorpions. And this is what I meant. Fatsob had a queue with more castles. He probably could go back and queue up more, but he's not a perfect player. He's just a brilliant player. So he actually runs away here, and Red says, Always more gold, dumb noob. And resigns. Always more gold, dumb noob. Karate Kid! I'm not going to judge you too harshly because you didn't think that thousands of people would get to see your saltiness on the internet, okay? And I have said some worse things from that. I don't know how old you are. If you're 16 years old, uh, I'm going to hold you... I'm still going to hold you responsible because don't be a jerk, but I've, I've done some dumb stuff in my day and I never thought a YouTuber would put it on the channel. So I'll just say this. There's room for Karate, karate Kid to to look back and have some regret and maybe be a better person in the future. But what, what's so funny is Fatsob rarely, if ever, engages in any chat whatsoever. There's been instances where people have been much harsher. There have been instances where people have told him to do something. And he just doesn't even respond. Fatsob is notorious for not even saying GG. He might not even know how to chat, for all I know. He just kind of plays this game every time he gets a chance. Only two games this December, but total about, like, I'm trying to do the math. It's on my other screen. Maybe 9,000, 9,500 games with these settings. Always Black Forest, always Vikings, and this is Fat Slob. And I try and find a game that is unique every single time, which is getting more and more difficult. But this is the first time I've seen a player try and go fast trap cut. So that was what made this game stand out from others. Uh, there's a lot of games where it ends with this type of a fight, but Red actually tried to go fast trap cut. So for that reason, I commend him. And remember, he played one game on this platform in like a year, year and a half. So I personally think that he looked for fat slob. Because, or at least he has some level of experience because when, when you say always more gold, dumb noob, that is pretty clear. I mean, he knows. He's played fat slob before or he's seen fat slob before. He's saying 
Fat Slob had more gold, which is true. But Red, you could have taken this gold, buddy. You could have taken this gold, and Fat Slob had the extra relic, but still, I think Fat Slob played it well. He was producing out of the castles. He didn't make any pikemen. And also, fun stat, I did do my homework before we uh, got in here. Sorry about all the different tabs. This is a classic setup, so it won't look pretty, but... Red had more gold. So, he said, always more gold, dumb noob. Red actually had more food. And he had a little bit more gold. He had, quick math here, 78 more gold. So, think before you trash talk, my friends. Maybe look at the statistics... Before you claim the opponent had more gold, that doesn't make a lot of sense to me because it did really feel like Fatsop lost a lot of gold units and still had more. But stats never lie. 250 kills. All these stats are accurate. Uh, technology stats, if that, if that interests you, is all there. Great attempt from Red with the fast stimp. Hate to see a little bit of poor sportsmanship, but let's be honest. In 2021, someone saying dumb noob is hardly bad compared to some of the other things we see. I'm so happy that Age of Empires 2 overall a better community, a more wholesome community, a more welcoming community. And uh, I hope that continues. So YouTube, I want to say thanks again for watching. Thanks for all the support. Um, it's been six and a half years of me making content. I want to do this for a very long time. There will be more fat sub uploads in the future. Um, I uploaded this on Christmas Eve. There's a very good chance you guys watch this on like Christmas Day or something, or I don't know, months later. However, look for the next upload that was actually uploaded on Christmas Day of 2021. Uh, it's a special game. Um, it was uh, suggested by basically all of the Age of Empires 2 subreddit uh, because someone posted a thumbnail. Uh, or sorry, they posted a screenshot of the end screen and then I got tagged relentlessly. <laughs> but it's an interesting game. So if you're interested in some low elo legends and not some fat slob, that'll be up and... Uh, whenever you see my content, I hope you guys appreciate it. I just want to know I appreciate you guys listening in and supporting. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Let me know about the 37 farm build order that everyone knew about. Aha. Uh -huh. And uh, as always, I'll see you next time.